Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. As we draw closer and closer to 2020, I think a lot of people um, were hoping for relief, saying, okay, 2020 was just a write-off, a very, very bad year for the virus, and, you know, working from home endlessly, and, you know, hopefully things will get better in 2021. But... Uh, in, I'm in Ottawa, which is in the province of Ontario, and as of Boxing Day, every part of Ontario will be under a hard lockdown or shutdown. So, you know, what a, what a way to, to welcome the new year. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk all about uh, the uh, abrupt climate change, the abrupt climate system change, but specifically on what's happening in the Arctic. So during uh, the last glacial period, there were these abrupt Dansgaard Osher, D-O for short, oscillations. So these would be, these were recorded in Greenland ice core records. And what they showed is that the temperatures over Greenland increased very, very abruptly uh, from the cold glacial period. They increased an amount of anywhere from about 5 degrees Celsius up to 16.5 degrees Celsius in the space of a decade or less. And then over a period of time, hundreds to thousand years, the temperature would drop back down again. And then along would come another one of these abrupt temperature rises um, as recorded over Greenland. And this, this was a global event. It wasn't just an Arctic event. So I'm going to discuss first. So the question is, is, you know, what really happened? I mean, during the cold period, there was lots of sea ice covering down even into the uh, Nor Nordic seas. Um, but then, and when there was a lot of sea ice cover, the ocean was stratified up in the Arctic. So there was a cold lens of, of uh, cold, uh, fairly fresh water. Um, and below that, there was warm, um, saltier water. Okay, and, and uh, the ocean was kind of stratified that way. But then as the sea ice cover started to leave abruptly, there was a lot more mixing so there was a lot more ocean convection of it was a, a mix so the warm saltier water came up and mixed with the cold fresh water in the lens and that brought a lot of heat up into the region and the ice rapidly um, disappeared um, and uh, or melted right back and uh, we had this uh, extreme warming um, which built up on itself so we got these, you know, the very abrupt changes um, over Greenland, huge melt. And then back then we would get at the near the end of the cycle, something called the Bond cycle, the whole cycle, the one Dansgaard Osher oscillation cycle. We'd have something called a Heinrich event where there'd be huge amounts of ice calved and moving southward and then cooling down the whole region. And then the cycle would repeat. Now, we don't have the, the uh, huge amounts of ice um, it, apart from that that is on Greenland. So what's happening, there's a lot of similarities to, di to today to the initial phases of one of these Dansgaard Osher oscillations. Um, now, it may not end in a Heinrich event. The only source of ice would be Greenland to, to do that. But... I'm going to talk about the parallels of what we're seeing today in the Arctic and what happened in the glacial, last glacial period with these Dansgaard Osher oscillations. Okay, so this is the paper. Um, this is a paper that recently came out, and um, I'm going to discuss in detail this. But first of all, uh, you know, let's, uh, first of all, there's a couple things I want to show you. So. This is my website, of course. Um, please consider donating on my PayPal to support my work. Uh, um, and I was talking all about the Arctic report card in, in, in a series of videos 
recently. Now, um, okay, so on, to find my Facebook page, it's paul.beckwith.9, okay, or just Google Paul Beckwith Facebook, and uh, I do post a lot of things there, so please check it out. And this is my Twitter feed, at Paul H. Beckwith. Please follow me um, if you're not presently doing so, and I post a lot of different things here also. And I'll be talking about some of these. There, I, I'm finding, you know, the number of topics right now is enormous. It, it used to be, um, you know, several years ago when I was doing this, um, it was very easy to pick talk, topics. And now um, I have to apply much larger filters, and, and I try to pick out the most key uh, parts of this abrupt climate system change um, and try to figure out where the system is heading, joining the dots, and so on. Okay, um, well, let's get talking about the Arctic. So this is uh, Zach Labe's uh, Twitter feed, and you can see the... Um, so this is, uh, this is the thickness, sea ice thickness, in October's from 1979 to 2016. And it's only ice that's um, about 1.5 meters and thicker. Okay, and what you can see is there's, there's uh, thick ice in, the, in 79, and as we come down to the present day, there's less and less thick ice. There's less and less multi-year ice. This is the temperature anomalies, um, September to November, um, for all of the different years. So 79 up to 2020. And what you can see is there was a definite switch, you know, from the early 2000s on, there's an awful lot more red. And this was a very powerful El Nino year. So huge amounts of warming. Um, and here's where we are in 2020, okay? Um, even more significant warming in the Arctic in this year versus 2016. And this year, we're in a weak La Nina. So the question is, why is the warming, why is the warming so great this year? Um, and if we had an El Nino year this year, it would have blown away the, the, these numbers. You know, we're in, a, we're in a relatively cool year and we're still setting temperature records. And I'll talk about that soon because I think that might be related to the uh, lack of aerosols from, uh, you know, coronavirus related um, cutting back of fossil fuel burning this, this year. Um, Arctic sea ice, um, here's where we are, 2020, okay, and uh, you can see the daily change, okay, is here. Um, this is the extent increase, so 150,000 uh, square kilometers of ice growth on some days, okay, and uh, let's continue. So here's where we are, this is the extent change. Um, this year, okay, so the ice is growing very, very quickly at the moment. Conditions are favorable for it to, to be growing. Okay, um, there's a couple other things I wanted to show you. This is, a, this is the temperature anomalies from September to November tw 2020 um, as a function of latitude. So we're at the South Pole here in Antarctica. We're at the North Pole here in the Arctic, the equator. Okay, uh, this is relative to a baseline of a recent baseline, 1951 to 1980. Okay, so you can see that the equator here, um, it's about, uh, you know, half a degree. I think the, the average, if you take the average, it's not, I don't see it appearing on here. That would be a nice number to have or a line showing the global average. But it's, it's something like, uh, you know, uh, probably close to, well, it's 0.8 degrees anyway. But if you go look at the Arctic, the temperature anomaly in the Arctic is huge, all the way up to six degrees. Um, if you go north of about, uh, that's about 75, 80, 85, 90. So about 85, 80 degrees and higher, from 80 degrees to 90 degrees north, over about six degrees Celsius temperature anomaly. 
If you talk about being over 75 degrees north, it's four degrees to six degrees. You know, and, and the number I still see from a lot of articles is the Arctic's warming at twice the rate. Well, you know, if you define the Arctic even, you know, this is uh, 60 degrees, depends on how you define the Arctic, but two to three times, two times warmer is only, you know, if you define the Arctic at what, 65 degrees latitude north or something. I mean, it's obviously that number is way, way out of date. So we're getting tremendous uh, Arctic temperature amplification. Um, let's just go down and see a few more other things here. Global average temperatures. Here, here is the monthly mean global land ocean temperature index. Huge, huge warming here. Um, and and this is the you know this is uh, look at the two thousands. It's just absurdly warm. Okay, um, and generally we're not we don't have too much ice up in this region. Okay, um, this is sea ice. Uh, this is December Arctic sea ice thickness. Um, more temperature anomalies. Okay, there's loads of stuff here. Here, this is interesting here. So, this is November 2020. Look at the huge amounts of warming. This is 8 to 13 degrees. Okay, this is relative to the 1951 to 1980 mean. Uh, November was 1.13 degrees Celsius warmer. September, October, November was a degree. And uh, December, over the last full year, December 2019 to November 2020, 1.04 degrees. So just incredible warming, um, incredibly high temperatures. Okay, so make sure you check out the, uh, you know, my Twitter feed. Now, the Arctic sea ice uh, graphs, you know, you can see, um, you know, the sea ice extent here. Um, okay, so, and also there's lots of information on um, you know on the Arctic sea ice graphs if you go up to the links and click on Zach Labes have a look at all the others but look at Zach Labes then you can see this sort of uh, thing here this is showing like temperature the air temperature sea ice extent sea surface temperature you know over over time uh, air temperature, sea ice extent, and all kinds of different plots and there. So basically, you know, if you look at the, this is the September minimum um, for uh, the last hundred years. Okay, and you can see how, you know, the ice is going back and back and back, uh, but it hasn't disappeared yet. Okay, so that's one of the questions that we have. So this paper I'm going to talk about now relates the ice in this region to the Dansgaard-Osher oscillations. But first I have to say what the, the DO Dansgaard-Osher oscillations are. So I just if you just go to Google Images and do a search for it, you can see all of the different images. And I like this one here, so I enlarged that one. So this is 50,000 years before present up to... 10,000 years before present, okay, the last uh, interglacial, um, okay, uh, the peak of the last interglacial was, uh, you know, about uh, 20, 21,000 years ago or so, and then it's been warming, you know, the Holocene about 10,000 years to the present. And if we look, the paper that I'm talking about looks from, looks from about 31,000 years ago to about 42,000 years ago. It looks at this period. So you can see as we move to the present, we get a huge warming and then the drop of temperature, huge warming, drop of temperature, huge warming, drop of temperature, huge warming, drop of temperature. There's a little guy here. So the paper studies these. It looks at different factors to determine the amount of Arctic sea ice, um, in particularly in the Nordic seas, and then uh, relates it to the temperature rise in the dansgaard osher oscillations over Greenland. So at the end of these events, it's sometimes this Heinrich event where you get uh, suddenly ice rafted debris all coming out um, at, towards the end of the, so of the, the oscillation cycle. And here is where you, so you get all this ice rafted debris here, and we can tell because it's carrying rocks and it drops them into the ocean. 
Okay, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk in detail about this new paper that's come out. Thanks for listening.